this video we're going to have a look at another kind of particle on a sloped surface example and this is a 2015 B ordinary level question. It's, it's tricky to set these up in the start but once you get used to it it does, definitely does get easier it's just setting it up in the first place. So we have a mass of 10 kg and 12 kg are connected by a taut light inelastic string which passes over a light smooth pulley as shown in the diagram. The 10 kg mass lies on a smooth plane now when it tells you it lies on a smooth plane, that's important. That means there's no friction. So we don't need to worry about our friction equation F equals mu times R for this example. It's at an angle of alpha to the horizontal where tan of alpha equals, that should be 4 over 3. The 12 kg mass hangs vertically. The system is released from rest. Find the common acceleration of the particles and the tension in the string. So if we look at the diagram here, what do we expect is going to happen? We probably expect that once this is released from rest, the 12 kg particle is going to move down with an acceleration A. And because they're connected by a light, inextensible string, the 10 kg particle will move up with the same acceleration A. So the next thing we have to do, like we always do, is look at the force diagrams for each one. So the 12 kg particle is fairly easy to do the force diagram. It's going to be pulled down by its weight, which is its mass, which is 12 times gravity G. And the only force pulling it up is the tension of the string. So for that particle, when we do our F equals MA equation, assuming we think it's going to move down, we assume that the 12 G mass or 12 G force is bigger than T force. So the resultant force would be 12 G minus T. And that's equal to its mass 12 times A. So there's equation one. Now, equation two gets a bit trickier. Well, it's, the equation itself isn't trickier, but just finding the forces. So let's do our force diagram for the 10 kg mass. Now, this is the 10 G, kg mass. The only force we can see acting on it is the string, which is the tension, pulling it this way. But it also experiences the force due to gravity. And gravity always acts straight down. So that's its gravity 10 times g. Now, we assume that it's going to accelerate up in this direction. So if we want to you get our F equals ma equation, we have to make sure that all the forces we look at are in the same direction as the acceleration. So this is the direction of our acceleration. So tension is obviously in that direction. But is there any other force? And I shouldn't say in that direction, but I mean parallel in this, along the same plane. Well, gravity isn't in the same direction, but gravity can be split into two components. It can be split into a component which is perpendicular to the plane. Here's the plane, remember, to what it's sitting on, and parallel to the plane. So what we need to do is we need to split gravity into these two components. Now, if the angle is alpha here, this angle is also alpha. So we know from earlier on that tan of alpha equals 4 over 3 from the question they gave us this. So remember, we need to find what alpha is, but the way we usually do it is we say, well, if that's, if, if that's alpha and tan of alpha is 4 over 3, that would be 4 and that would be 3, meaning the hypotenuse would be 5. So sine of alpha then would be opposite over hypotenuse would be 4 over 5. And cos of alpha will be 3 over 5. Remember, all we're doing there is getting the ratios of the angles. So now, we have a triangle here, and we want to get this component. So this would be 10 times g cos alpha. And this would be 10 g sine alpha. If that's confusing to you, remember when we just did triangles like this, and we were splitting it into a horizontal and vertical component. So we did it with projectiles. If that was 10 and that was alpha, well, this is 10 cos alpha and this is 10 sine alpha. And we're doing exactly the same thing here, except our force isn't 10, it's 10 G. And uh, the triangle is turned upside down. So where does this bit here come in? Well, if that's 10 G cos alpha, that's the same as 10 G multiplied by three over five which is 6G. Is that correct? 6G, yeah. Yeah, 6G. And this will be 10G multiplied by 4 over 5, 
because sine alpha equals 4 and 5, so that's going to be 8g. So now, remember, for our f equals ma, we're looking for the forces which are in this direction. Now, t is one of them. Is there any other force in that direction? Well, if you look here, this force is in the same direction. And just because it's down here doesn't mean it's not acting on it in the same way. We could move this and draw it up here. Same thing. So now if we assume that it's going to move up, we assume the T force is bigger than the 10G sine alpha force. Is equal to its mass, which is 10 times its acceleration. So that's T minus, well we know 10G sine alpha is the same as 8G. So T minus 8G equals 10A. And that's equation 2. So the tricky bit here really is the diagram, because the rest of it now is just what you've done. We have two equations, 1 and 2, and we need to find out what acceleration is and what tension is. So equation 1 was 12G minus T equals 12A. And equation 2 was minus 8G plus T, and I'm just writing it in a different way. I'm writing the G component first, equals 10A. And I won't do this out fully, I'll let you solve, but we solve for t, it'll be 4g equals 22a. So a equals 4g over 22, a equals 2g over 11. And you can leave your answer like that. So that's your answer to part 1 for a. Then what you do is you sub in these values into, your into one of your equations to figure out what t is. So t is 10a plus 8g. So that's going to be 10 times 2g over 11 plus 8g. And I'd like you to figure that out now, but you should get an answer of 2g, no, 108g over 11. Newtons is the unit for force.